Hi folks, HR Funk here. Welcome to 2024 and my first video of 2024. If you saw my last video of 2023, you know that was the annual video where I select my favorite firearm for that calendar year. And in that video, if you saw it, you know that I selected the Tizosh Raider as my favorite firearm of 2023. So maybe it's only appropriate that I start out this year with another Tizosh offering. This is a handgun that I have been wanting to look at for a long time. I first became aware of these about a year ago, maybe a little bit more, and it took me quite a bit of work to finally get one. This is the Tizosh 9mm Stingray 1911 pistol. And I want to say thanks to Jared from SDS Imports for making sure I got this handgun for this review. And this review is actually going to be several parts. I'm going to start out part one today with an up-close shop review of the Stingray. In part two, we'll head off to the range and see how it shoots. And in part three, I'm going to be comparing the Stingray to a similar model from another well-known 1911 factory to see how the two handguns stack up against each other. So if you're interested in this pistol, I'm going to have a lot of information about the Stingray by the time I get all the way done with all three parts of this video. And then it's probably going to show up in some other videos even after that. So stay tuned. I'm going to get started right now with the up-close shop review of the Tizosh Stingray. So here we go with the up-close look at the Tizosh Stingray. And I'll start this up-close look the way I normally do, which is the way you bring it home from the store, and that is in the case. Now a lot of you know that I'm not really that concerned about the packaging a firearm comes in. I'm more concerned about what's inside the package. But for those of you who are, Tizosh has been using these hard plastic cases for a couple of years now, and they're pretty nice. They are heavy duty, they are lockable, they have latches, and they even have an O-ring around the inside to seal them. I don't know if you're able to see it or not but to make them somewhat waterproof or water resistant anyway and weather resistant. So pretty nice cases, nice foam insert to keep the firearm from sliding around. Accompanying the firearm are some instructions for the trigger lock, the trigger lock itself, a bushing wrench if I can get it out here, back behind this part of the foam is a manual there is some cleaning gear and there are two magazines. Now this is something Tizosh has changed over the years. The very first handgun of theirs I ever acquired was the US Army model and at that time their handguns were shipping with just one magazine. A lot of you know that I've gone on several rants about that in the videos and Tizosh is one of the manufacturers that is now including two magazines with each one of their handguns. Thank you Tizosh, that is a very welcome improvement. When I take the Stingray out of the box, you can see it has the usual tag, which says that it is a forged 1911. This is a 9mm 1911, if you missed that in the opening. It has a forged frame and slide. Now, this has an alloy frame, so I assume it's forged alloy. It is machined alloy. Series 70 internals says that it uses standard 1911 magazines, and it was hardened before machining. So now let me get rid of the packaging and the other accoutrements here and we'll take a close-up look at the handgun itself. So I now dispense with the accessories and doodads that accompany the Tizosh Stingray and this is the handgun itself. If you look close at the back of the slide here you can see that little logo there. The Stingray is part of the Tizosh carry line and for anyone who's interested the SKU number for this handgun is 10100106 and currently, as of January of 2024, the MSRP for the Stingray is $6.19.99. But as usual, with a little bit of shopping around, you're probably going to be able to find that quite a bit less expensive than the MSRP. And here is a look at the starboard side of the Stingray. And overall, this handgun has some very clean lines. There's not a lot of radical slide cuts or rails or anything else. Overall, it's pretty close to the traditional 1911 design with only one or two departures that I'll talk about as we go. And we'll start the top-down look at the Stingray with the sights, which are Novak style using a three-dot system. And if I can focus or lock the focus, I should say, on the front sight, I'll give you a look at the sight picture as you would be shooting the Stingray. 
I have used Novak style sights for a long time and they work very well for me so I have no problem with those at all and I am having a problem with my focus for some reason. Moving on to the slide itself, it is finished in a matte bluing which looks very nice and also the slide cuts on the Stingray are the fish scale style that I typically see with Smith & Wesson handguns and I always like this. I think it's very functional. It works very well when you're grasping the slide for cocking. And I also think it looks pretty good. By the way, I misspoke a couple of minutes ago when I said the Stingray was part of the carry line from Tizosh. It's actually part of their concealment line. So if you go to the website, look under the concealment tab, and that's where you will find this. The model number for the Stingray is B9BA. And there are several variations of this same basic handgun in the concealment line. There are 45 ACP versions, there are full steel versions, there are full size, 5 inch versions, and there are the commander length, which is what the Stingray is. As you can see on this side, the ejection port is lowered and flared for good functioning. The hammer on the Stingray is the commander style skeletonized hammer. You can see it is grooved on the top if you want to thumb cock the hammer. The thumb safety is ambidextrous. You can see that there. It is an elongated thumb safety, but it's a standard GI slide stop, which I like. I've had some handguns in the past, some 1911 style handguns, that have a lengthened thumb safety and a lengthened slide stop and all of a sudden this starts to get very crowded in here and when you're trying to figure out exactly which lever you want to actuate it can be a little bit difficult just because there's not very much room there so you don't have that problem with the stingray with that gi slide stop even though it does have the lengthened ambi thumb safety taking a look at the barrel of the stingray it is a four and a quarter inch commander length barrel it is forged and machined. It is also button rifled. I'm not sure what the rifling twist rate is. I could not find that information, but I'm sure whatever it is, is appropriate for the 9mm cartridge. And I'm going to try to get you a look down in through the ejection port there. So you can see this is a ramped 9mm barrel. Again, to aid with proper functioning. You can see that ramp right there. So there should not be an issue with any type of 9mm ammunition as far as feeding is concerned. Here is a look at the grip safety. As you can see, it is the lengthened beaver tail style to prevent slide bite or hammer bite from your shooting hand. It also has the so-called memory bump to help with positive disengagement of the grip safety. There is an up-close look at the checkered magazine release to help ensure that you get good positive contact between your thumb and the release as you are changing magazines. It's a little difficult to see in the video, but the frame of the Stingray is a light gray, almost a greenish gray color to make it a two-tone finish on the handgun, which I think looks very good. I've said for a long time I'm a sucker for two-tone finishes and I like the way the two finishes, or maybe I should say the two colors, interact on the Stingray. The grips on the Stingray are a G10 composite material in a pattern that Tizosh calls the Starburst. You can see there is a cutout there for your thumb when you are changing magazines and overall it gives a very positive grip on the handgun. The trigger of the Stingray that you see here is a three-hole lightened version that is aluminum and it's what I would call a medium length. It's not the short trigger that I prefer on the A2 style handguns, but it's also not as long as some 1911 triggers. It has a grooved face that you can see there and it feels pretty good. I'll weigh that shortly and we'll see exactly where that trigger is breaking. One of the biggest departures of the Stingray from the typical 1911 design can be seen right here. It has an Ed Brown style bobtail cut to the bottom of the grip frame and that helps to maximize concealability and in concert with the aluminum frame, which is a lightweight addition to this handgun, it makes it a very carryable variant of the 1911. At this point I've disassembled a Stingray in order to show you a few things internally, beginning with 
just the quality of machining and if you look here at the frame you can see that it is very clean I don't see any chatter marks on the aluminum anywhere by the way I don't know if I mentioned it before but this gray green finish on the frame is Cerakote also you can see this uses a standard GI recoil system which I prefer I am not a fan of full length guide rods at all Here's a look at the barrel, and let me change the focus again to hopefully give you a better up-close look at the barrel. Again, very nice machining. There is a look at that ramp. And again, I'm fighting the focus on my camera. Yeah, I don't know if I can get you a look down the barrel or not. I'll give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, I might be able to have a little bit of a look at the rifling there which looks very sharp the stingray is a series 70 pistol you can see there is no firing pin safety in the bottom of the slide anywhere to be seen and just to try to make things complete I'll give you an up close look at the magazine as well it is a steel magazine as you see marked as being appropriate for the 9mm cartridge and I do not see a manufacturer on here which is something that I've gotten used to with Tzosh magazines there are some people out there that seem to get Mechgar magazines with theirs I think some other people have got other magazines Tzosh just seems to source these things where they can get them and again I don't see any manufacturer on here at all but when we get out to the range we'll see how they run and here's a look at the stingray completely reassembled by the way I was able to completely disassemble and reassemble this pistol without the need for using the bushing wrench even though one is included in the case and I much prefer being able to disassemble and reassemble them by hand so that makes me happy looking at the weight of the stingray with no magazine it's coming in at under 30 ounces 27.7 ounces we'll add the empty magazine which makes it 30.3 that's right where Tzosh lists it on the website they show it as being 30 ounces now we'll load up the magazine and have one round for the chamber and see what the weight would be when you were actually carrying it and with a fully loaded magazine and I don't think I said this before but these are nine round magazines with eight witness holes along the side and of course you can see the top cartridge and one round for the chamber this is coming in at 34.5 ounces so not bad at all weight wise for a carry package by the way this is 115 grain 9 millimeter ammunition from hot munitions now other than weight there are no dimensions listed for the Tzosh stingray on the website but it is a standard commander length 1911 so height width thickness etc are all going to be commensurate with every other commander variant of the 1911 handgun so last but not least let's check the trigger on the stingray and we'll see where it's breaking first pull is at five pounds 3.5 ounces so just over five pounds let's try a second one slightly heavier 5 pounds 5.9 ounces and the final pull is coming in at 5 pounds 2.8 ounces for a 3 pull average of 5 pounds 4 ounces so just a little over 5 pounds it felt lighter to me than that when I was checking it in my hand Let's get it out of the vise here and we will change the focus once again in terms of the quality of the brake I'm feeling no creep whatsoever just a little over travel this is a non adjustable trigger by the way you can see there is no over travel adjustment there all in all not a bad carry trigger this is not a match 1911 trigger 
but it's pretty nice on a carry pistol. So there you go, folks. That's going to do it for my up-close shop review of the Tizosh Stingray, and it's going to bring to a close part one of my evaluation of this handgun. In part two, as I said all the way back at the beginning of the video, we're going to head off to the range and see how it shoots. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments on this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. Also, remember the discount code from House of Pain, either House of Pain Armament or House of Pain Munitions. Either one, if you go there, you can use my discount code, which is HRFUNK10, and that'll save you 10% off your purchase from House of Pain. Last but not least, don't forget the Target sponsor for the channel. Go to Targets Online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.